works to prove faith. Well, I'd be a heathen, I'll guarantee you. I mean, I'll go right on down there rather than handle snakes. If that's how you prove it, I don't want it. I'd rather drink Lysol. But if you came it with a snake in your hand, I would quit something I wasn't doing. I would give up an evil that I was not involved in. Well, a snake. See, if I had been Eve, you would still be perfect. A <laughs> part of how we do our thing, does God have a sense of humor? Yes, he does. And I think we have to keep that in mind. And ministers sometimes forget it. We have to live out a very holy, dignified, significant role among people and speak with a mellifluous voice, <clears throat> be ready in any crisis to bring comfort, strength, and assurance and forget that we're normal. See, we learned this in the seminary. They give us a degree called a Bachelor or Master of Divinity. See, that's not my problem. Divinity, I got in pretty good shape. Humanity is what's tearing me up. I need a Master of Humanity. And if I start remembering that, I begin to remember all those times that I'm terribly normal. Now, weird things can happen to you in the ministry anytime, anywhere, and they do. A lot of them we can't share with you lay people. See, I can't come up here on Sunday morning and say, I want to tell you the funniest thing happened at the funeral Thursday. You can't do that. <laughs> Funerals are serious time. need to be treated that way. But strange things happen at funerals. I have a pastor here in the state of Tennessee, and he will remain nameless, but this is an absolutely true story. I'm not inventing it. It's too funny reporting it. Uh, he was in his very first church over close to Knoxville, and he was pastor of a little congregation and was called on to do his first funeral about a month after he became a pastor. Well, you know, it's just right up there, and he's, what's he going to do? Real uptight about this. Went to see an older minister to speak with him about what he should do for the funeral service. And the older minister said, uh, do you own a minister's manual? And you can tell this fellow had been at it. This, this voice has been aged in oak. This, you know, do you own a minister's manual? And the younger minister friend said, well, no, he, he didn't. And the older minister said, buy yourself a minister's manual. It will tell you what you must do. <laughs> Boy, had this fellow had been called, you just didn't doubt it at all. He was in the right place. Explain that real fast. Minister's manual has special ordered services for things like weddings, funerals, ordination of a deacon, ordination of a minister, dedication of a new church facility, commissioning of a missionary, and the scriptures and orders and all that stuff are in order. And then there are different kinds of funerals. An infant who died at birth, uh, a military service, uh, an elderly person who died at 104 after a long and fruitful life. So the funeral services are arranged differently depending on the circumstances of the death of the dearly departed. So in the midst of all of this, you have a minister's manual which clearly lays out various kinds of services for you. Different denominations like the Episcopal Presbyterian groups have their very own minister's manual. Now some of us in the Baptist and the Nazarene and the Church of Christ groups might use one that's kind of general that's provided by the funeral home. See, And uh, it'll have their name on the back near the family at the graveside. There. So as you can see, first state bank out here on the back. Now then, the minister takes his minister's manual, this young fellow that he buys at the Cokesbury bookstore or something like that, non-Baptist operation. They hadn't gotten out there yet. They're, we're gaining on them. But uh, he buys this minister's manual and goes into it, and here is a wonderful layout for a funeral service. He thinks it is just spectacular. Gives him scriptures and special arrangements and hymns to be sung and all this beautiful stuff. Wow, he just thought it was terrific. So he works up his funeral service and got it all in shape. Then... Uh, goes out to do the funeral. The people were amazed at what a wonderful minister they had. How tasteful, how thoughtful, how significant this service was. Well, he just <laughs> gave them his most wonderful thoughts. Then they drive out to the cemetery and it's time for the committal service when we commit the dearly departed to the earth forever. So they get out and get out of the funeral car, <laughs> slams the door, and opens his little minister's manual to the committal service portion of the funeral. It's a second ribbon. These deals have two ribbons in them. And uh, opens it to the second ribbon. And he reads here, The minister may wish to gather a handful of soil and walk before the pallbearers to the burial site, scattering the dirt abroad <laughs> and reciting the following verses, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, from the earth we come to the earth we return. Well, he says, that's terrific. So he gets him a big handful of dirt, and it's running out between his class ring and his little finger. 
And he looks back at the pallbearers who are, as we say in eastern Kentucky, studying him right smart. <laughs> and these are kind of typical route to good farm folks. All these good men, uh, brown from the eyebrows down, white from the eyebrows up. They wear their caps in the sunshine. And here they are holding the, the casket of the dearly departed with both hands, each of them, ready to walk toward the gravesite. And the minister looks back at them with a handful of dirt. And he says, y'all ready? Now they're thinking to themselves, preacher, this isn't a bring your own dirt funeral. And one of them sort of shrugged like I guess so, and he just pivots with authority, starts walking to the little funeral home tent up on the hill, scattering the dirt, and they're walking behind him like they're following a diesel up a slow grade, just coughing and hacking as the dirt flies back through the air. And boy, he is just giving it to them. Ashes to ashes, dust to there. They're coughing and clearing out of there. From the earth we come, to the earth we return. Boom, walked right in the hole. True story, true story. There's a minister in Waco, Texas several years ago. I won't give you his name because I don't want to embarrass him on this album. But he's what you call a rather enthusiastic kind of preacher. That Methodists aren't accustomed to this. They uh, rarely ever get enough preaching to sweat through. You know, just kind of hang in there and be sociable, wear organdy gloves and things like that. And this preacher was one of these kind of guys who was kind of a showman. And on Sunday nights, he got real loose. And he'd come down out of the pulpit and preach in the aisles to people. Just carry on. <laughs> and uh, I remember one Sunday night, he got out in the aisle and he was just letting somebody have it. And he says, in this Second Peter 3, 2 says, and he went blank. Couldn't remember the verse. <laughs> Second Peter 3, 2, I remind you. And he couldn't think. So he runs back down the aisle, up on the steps, opens the Bible, whiplashes through the pages, finds it, goes, no, 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 runs back down there and then finishes the quotation. Now that's the way he was. Well, I went to Baylor University in Waco and the students used to just turn out in droves to go down there on Sunday night because this guy would just turn the place into a kind of a wild circus. And you never knew what would happen next, but it was kind of crazy. One Sunday night just before the evening service, a lady came back to his study who was one of his members. And she called him by name and she said, my brother is here from Ohio and he's pastor of a church there. And I just thought perhaps you might like to know that he's in the service. And the pastor with a marvelous, booming, go get him kind of voice said, wonderful. Said, uh, uh, I think I should call on him for prayer this evening, but he'd be willing to do that. Well, yes, he'd be pleased, I'm sure. He said, good. So he gets the fellow's name down, and in the service comes out, and he says, we're so pleased tonight to have worshiping with us from Ohio. Brother such and such, call the man by name, and he says, At this time, I'd like to ask him to lead us to the throne of grace in a word of prayer. Bowed his head. Well, unbeknownst to this pastor, the visiting <laughs> preacher was a Pentecostal holiness in high gear type. <laughs> and the minute he was called on for prayer, he grabbed the pew in front of him and half launched himself in prayer. Oh, God, we thank you, and just off and running. Well, the church was used to the pastor being kind of an unusual type, but they weren't used to this enthusiasm. And I mean, he was off and running. Oh, God, one of these mornings we're going to wake up and look outside and it's going to be darkness. Well, the pastor <laughs> sort of, you know, caught fire with this old boy. And he says, oh, yes. <laughs> and the fellow says, we're going to call Hong Kong, China. They're going to say it's dark over here. The preacher says, oh, God, help us. <laughs> We're going to call Honolulu. They're going to say it's dark over here. The preacher says, oh, God, help us. <laughs> We're going to call San Francisco. And they're going to say it's dark over here. He said, oh, God, help us. We're going to call Washington, D.C. They're going to say, it's dark over here. He said, oh, God, what a phone bill. <laughs> True. 